Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk video. I hope it doesn't make me a jerk for asking, but could you hit the like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our first story of the day is by Aesthetics. Am I the jerk for not replacing delivery driver's shoes? This just happened a few hours ago and I'm still seething with anger. I ordered pizza for delivery for dinner from a local place, a place my family orders from often. I got two pizzas for my family and waited for delivery. 25 minutes later, I went to greet the delivery driver at the door. I have four dogs that are free to poop in the yard, so I have a sign that tells people to keep off the grass. I have the sign so people who aren't my friends or family stay off the grass in general. I don't want people who I don't know on my grass, especially considering it's been rainy and muddy the last few weeks. I never would have expected the delivery boy to walk through the grass, he did. Once he got to the door, he began complaining that he stepped in dog poop and that his new shoes were ruined. I looked at his shoes and he indeed had dog poop on them. I shrugged and pointed to the sign that said to keep off the grass. I tried to hand him the cash and get the pizzas, but he refused. He told me I needed to pay for the shoes to be replaced as they were around $120. I laughed in his face, thinking he must have been joking. I brushed it off and once again tried to get the pizzas. He didn't budge and told me that he was taking the pizzas back and he would be back to get the money later. I was angry with what happened, but I made alternate dinner plans and let him leave. He pulled in again and demanded payment for the shoes and I once again declined. My husband came to the door as well on my side. I wasn't going to pay because the delivery driver was careless. While I continued to argue with the driver, my husband called the pizza place and put them on speakerphone. He asked to speak to whoever was in charge and was informed that it was the owner on the line. My husband let him know about the situation, but to our surprise, he sided with the delivery driver. If you don't pay my son for his replacement shoes, your address will be blacklisted from our restaurant. The owner clearly was angry as well. My husband ended the call, and we decided to just ignore them and not eat there anymore. The driver clearly was not going to leave. After another hour and a half of arguing, I told him I'd call the police if he didn't leave our front door. Now he's parked on the street, technically not our property, and sitting there. It's been another hour. Police can't remove him since it's not our property, but I'm very uncomfortable. I told my family about the situation, and my brother-in-law told me I'm acting like a witch. Am I the jerk for not paying? I think OP's not the jerk in this situation. I don't know if the delivery driver spent their entire paycheck on these shoes and couldn't afford any other pairs, but who wears $120 shoes while delivering pizza anyways? There's no legal ramifications for him stepping in dog poop on your lawn and then having to pay for the shoes. Sucks to be him, doesn't make OP the jerk. What do you guys think? In somebody's front yard, if they don't clean up their own dog poo, and a delivery guy goes and walks through it, should the house owners be slightly liable for either trying to clean up their shoes or pay them a little bit? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Our next story is by no minimum 7226 Am I the jerk for giving my cousin $50,000 against my wife's wishes? Had a belated Christmas gathering last week with my extended family. The custom for this event is that we exchange stocking stuffers, nothing over $10. Ever since I've known we've had this gathering, I've always bought scratch-off lottery tickets for all the adults. As you would expect, they're almost always trash, but every year we have a few hit for an extra ticket, two, five, even ten dollars. One year, my uncle's ticket hit for 50 bucks and everyone went crazy. It's always a good time. So this year, my 23-year-old cousin goes nuts. He holds his ticket up and claims that it just hit for the max jackpot, $50,000. Everyone rushes over, a couple of my uncles verify, yep, this kid just won $50,000. I was freaking elated. I scooped him up in a big bear hug and said, Merry Christmas, you lucky a-hole. He was screaming and his mom was actually in tears and the whole room was excited. It was literally one of the top 10 experiences of my life. I feel my phone vibrate in my pocket and I pull it out to see my wife has sent me a text message that says, come out to the car. I go outside and can tell by her body language she is pissed. She told me there is no way that we're giving my cousin $50,000, then starts fussing at me about buying the lotto tickets to begin with. Two things to explain, I'm not saying that $50,000 isn't a lot of money, it's a ton, but I'm in my mid 40s. I have a two decade professional career, my wife is a stay at home mom by choice, we drive later model cars that are paid for, 
our retirements and the kids' college accounts are fully funded? Our only debt is the house. I'm saying this to show that while $50,000 would be nice to have, it's not life-changing money for us. My cousin, on the other hand, just graduated from college. His mom is single and was one of those fiercely independent women who refused charity. She took on extra jobs to help him pay for school. He worked at least two jobs himself while going to school full time and still managed Dean's List. But he still had to take out loans. He landed a job, but he can't afford a car yet or live close to the office, so he's looking at nearly a two hour commute. He's also saving for an engagement ring for his sweet girlfriend of three years. This money would literally change this kid's life. And frankly, I think it couldn't have gone to a better member of my family. I explained to her that we're not giving him 50 grand. We gave him a ticket I spent five bucks on. She's not buying and she won't let it go. She's now demanding I go back in there and take the ticket back from him, saying maybe we'll give him some of it. We argue a little bit. I can't get her to explain why she wants this money so bad other than, it's ours and you're not giving it away. We fought all the way home, and she hasn't spoken more than a couple of words to me since. I think even in the nicest of worlds, OP wouldn't even have like, a situation that holds up in court if they wanted to get that money back. I mean, yeah, it kind of sucks that you didn't have some epiphany and said, you know what, this $5 scratcher, I should keep this one and cash it out. It's a bit of a tough pill to swallow, but OP's partner needs to just accept that. It was a $5 scratcher given as a gift, they struck big, and their life is going to be so vastly improved, and you're still only out 5 bucks. I think OP did both the right thing and is not a jerk. This next story is by Blast Off Bride. Am I the jerk for calling off my wedding a day before? Friday night, I'm laying in bed and my fiance Mark is in the bathroom. His phone goes, so I let him know and he tells me to look at it for him. It's a group text with his father, father's husband, and grandmother. She said, can't believe he's marrying some nappy-headed half-breed tomorrow. To which his father almost immediately responded, LOL, love is love. There's no other messages before hers. For context, I'm biracial, my mother's black and so is half of my family that was coming to the wedding. I was obviously pissed, hurt, but mostly shocked. His grandmother has been very warm with me, as well as his father. We spent a lot of time together and they've never given me those types of vibes. I started crying and Mark asked what was wrong. I couldn't even tell them what they said. I just held the phone in front of his face and asked if they'd said anything like that before. He said he knew they were racist and tries to educate them, but they don't care. They're set in their ways. That just made me angrier, so I gave him an ultimatum, me or his family. He said it's not fair of me to blame him because he's not that way, but I feel like if I'd known they felt that way, I wouldn't have agreed to marry into that family. I told him I'd refuse to be civil or have our future children around them, and I didn't understand how he can love me and still be okay with those people. We repeated that argument for hours before I decided to call off the wedding. He asked what I was going to tell everyone, and I said I'd leave it to him. I'm with my family now. I'm getting calls and texts about how I'm being unreasonable and that it was just a joke. How they all love me and they don't see color. His mother called me a selfish jerk because they paid for our wedding since my parents aren't educated and didn't have the means to pay for it, even threatening to take me to court to pay them back for it. I don't think OP's being a jerk in the situation because the fact of the matter is these people are going to be such a mental burden to be around. Knowing how they truly feel and how they're going to be talking behind closed doors, and for the fiancé to be kind of complacent with the whole thing, it's really late into it, but I think it's more than a valid reason for calling it off. This next story is by Corrupted as Eater. Am I the jerk for taking away my son's computer, phone, and TV for 12 months after he committed a hate crime? My son, aged 14, was in some trouble with his school and even the police after he attacked a Jewish boy unprovoked whilst shouting racial slurs? I won't go into detail exactly what he said, but it was completely abhorrent. I don't know where this behavior came from, but it has caused a lot of distress to me and my wife. I took away his computer and TV and sold it. It's gone. I took his phone and gave him an old Motorola without any smartphone features, just if he needs to contact us in an emergency. For the next 11 months, he is going to have no access to the internet inside our home. After a few weeks, my wife started to tell me that my punishment is a bit harsh, but I'm ready to stick to my guns. 
She told me that having a smartphone is basically essential for a boy of his age. He seems to be incredibly sorry. He has very little to do when he comes home from school, but I want him to know just how severe his actions were. I don't think OP's a jerk for doing what they did, but I also hope that that isn't the only thing that they do. Like, maybe that restriction plus actual therapy, with maybe the chance to lower the amount of time with repetitive therapy sessions, that would be a lot better in my eyes. But as it is, I think not the jerk. Our next story is by Peanut Butter Cupula. Am I the jerk for telling my 13-year-old sister that she's the reason she doesn't have friends? Sounds bad, but let me explain. I, 19-year-old female, have a sister, Nora, 13-year-old female. First and foremost, I want to confirm that Nora is a smart kid. She's classified as being moderately gifted, bordering on highly gifted. However, Nora is incredibly arrogant and egotistical. She claims that other people are intellectually inferior and that they're essentially too stupid for her to associate with. She would make similar comments about me until I got admitted to a selective university and began studying a smart major, accounting. This isn't just a problem with family members. The school constantly requests parent meetings because Nora will be rude to other students and refuse to socialize them for class activities. Whenever they come back from the meetings, our parents will complain about how the school doesn't understand Nora and is trying to drag her down with the average kids. They'll pretty much reassure Nora every time that she shouldn't have to hold herself back. I don't have any classes on Fridays, so my parents ask me to pick up Nora from school since they work and they don't want her taking the bus due to COVID concerns. Before I even get out of the parking lot, Nora starts to complain about being stuck with this kid for a Spanish group project. They were meant to split into pairs and practice the new vocabulary by writing out a minute long skit and acting it out for the class. The boy Nora got paired with, Ike, was dyslexic and had trouble reading the script. Nora had outright called Ike stupid and said how he was just making excuses and not trying hard enough. She kept ranting even when I would ask her politely to be quiet because I needed to focus on making certain turns. Nora complained about how they had the option to pick a friend, but how her underqualified teacher had to put her with Ike because no one in her class is intelligent enough to keep up with her. I had gotten to a red light, so I turned around and told her something pretty close to, Nora, you aren't friendless because everyone else is intellectually inferior, you're friendless because of your nasty attitude. You may think you're the smartest kid in the room, but you won't go anywhere in life until you learn to treat people with respect, much less make friends. Something I've wanted to tell Nora for a very long time. My sister was stunned and was completely silent for the rest of the car ride. After dinner, once my parents were home and Nora was in her room, my parents basically laid into me for what I told Nora. They said how I was basically bullying Nora and telling her how she should hold herself back when she's exceptional. I told my parents that I wouldn't say anything like that again, but I still feel what I said was necessary. Am I the jerk? It might have been blunt, it might have been hard for Nora to hear, but it kind of is the truth. And for that, I think OP's not being a jerk. OP, in fact, kind of laid it out fairly nicely. OP could have said like, Nora, you're an egotistical maniac. But all they said was just treat people with respect and you'd make friends and go places. And our final story of the day is by Downtown Bowler 8987. Am I the jerk for being upset that I'm not involved in my brother's wedding, which I'm paying for? I, female 31, have a brother, male 29, and he's getting married next year. We lost our mom in 2012 and our dad in 2016. We're each other's only living relatives. I have a good job, I earn a lot of money, 150,000 British pounds per year. My brother also has a good job but doesn't earn anywhere near as much, 35,000. We were raised to always look after each other and share. My partner and I are child free. Over the years, I've paid for my brother's master's degree, paid the down payment on his house. Our parents rented so there's no family home. I'll also be paying for my future sister-in-law, female, 26, and my brother to have future rounds of IVF. Sister-in-law works part-time and earns about 15000 a year. Her parents are not well off. My brother asked if I could contribute to the cost of the wedding. I said I'd pay for it, as is small with 100 guests, and set up a wedding account for them, into which I put £25,000, which they both have access to. Sister-in-law's entire family are involved as bridesmaids and groomsmen. My husband and I are guests. 
brother and sister-in-law have been going around venues with their family and I get emailed the costing if it's selected. I told my brother I don't mind paying for the wedding but I feel really weird that everyone else is involved in the decision and I'm just involved with paying. Brother has said that I'm not our parents, I can't replace our parents and that's why I'm not involved. Why can't I just do something nice without making him feel crap? I feel like a jerk for causing drama, but also feel taken advantage of. Am I the jerk? I think OP's not the jerk because they've taken care of their brother their entire life it seems like. Master's degree, down payment on their house, eventually paying for them to have IVF for kids and paying for their wedding. The least they could do is let you participate in it, just like everybody else on sister-in-law's family is doing. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.